Welcome to Horror Party Movies Kids, where we not only serve a fun movie to enjoy with friends, but we also serve a fun, delicious drink recipe to tie along with it. Whether the movie's funny or unintentionally funny, our picks are guaranteed to be a good time. I'm Mike Conway, and for today's episode, we'll be diving into Lamberta Bava's 1985 heavy metal infused cult classic, Demons. Demons follows college student Cheryl as she and a handful of other random people are given a movie ticket to a special screening to a horror film at a brand new theater by a mysterious man in a mask. Soon after the movie begins, they find themselves trapped inside along with unworldly demons who possess those around them. Directed by Lamberto Bava, son of famed giallo film director Mario Bava, and from a script by Argento and old man Bava collaborator Dardano Sarchetti, Demons was first envisioned as part of an anthology series similar to 1963's Black Sabbath. But when the story was being developed, they loved it so much they scratched the anthology idea and went straight for a full-on feature. The script was then brought to the attention of Dario Argento, who at this point in his career was more interested in producing, having already produced Dawn of the Dead. Argento lent his hand on the script and then passed it along to screenwriter Franco Farini to punch it up a notch. And punch it up he did because Demons is an absolute blast from start to finish during its 88 minute runtime and never lets up. And it's also one that totally earned this title for a party movie. Although the film is Italian, it comes complete with a killer soundtrack consisting of popular heavy metal and rock music to appeal to American audiences with bands like Motley Crue, Saxon, Accept, Billy Idol, and Rick Springfield? Christ's sake, Cheryl, don't talk to strangers. So what makes this a party movie? Well, grab your poison of choice and let's make a game out of it. And be sure to stay to the end of the video where I show you how to make the drink to tie along with the movie. But first, read this one last time to save not only you, but also our asses. Got all that? Good, let's party. Demons begins with a clean cut college girl, Cheryl, hopping aboard the punk rock train to class. Hey, that book is upside down, Cheryl. You can't study that way. There you go. She then gets off and is now all alone in the subway. Or is she? When suddenly she sees glimpses of a man who may or may not have been sent back in time to kill her unborn baby. He'll be back. She continues when suddenly the masked man hands her a ticket promoting a movie. Come check out my band. We totally kick ass. She asks for another free ticket for her friend, Kathy, who is waiting for her outside. Being a bad influence as she is, Cheryl suggests playing a little hooky and bookies it to the movies. She's totally punk rock now. The movie is being shown at a new movie theater called The Metropole, where a handful of other golden ticket winners are heading to as well, mostly made up of assholes like Grandpa Joe. This is our anniversary. So what? I'm taking you to a show. What else do you want? And Buddy the Elf cosplayer handling tickets. The theater is so new, the only concessions in the lobby is a Coke machine that needs to be Fonzied in order to work. Once everyone enters, they are absolutely mind blown over a display straight out of Romero's Night Riders, including this blind guy who senses something isn't quite right about the silver demon mask. Take a drink whenever this mask appears on screen. Unfortunately, he wasn't loud enough for P.I.M.P. Tony and his ladies of the night, Rosemary and Carmen. Rosemary puts on the mask. Well, how do I look? Smokin'! But when she removes the mask, she is left with a cut on the cheek. Damn, Rosemary, can't take your goofy ass anywhere. Once inside the auditorium, two horn dogs, George and Ken, disregard the universal skip a seat rule and sit right next to Cheryl and Kathy. The movie within the movie immediately kickstarts the heart with the best track of Motley Crue's Theater of Pain as headlights from two motorcycles appear to resemble demon eyes. It is revealed to be your standard run-of-the-mill horror film when stereotypical teenagers find the readings of Nostradamus and a mask just like the one out in the lobby. Whoa! The film seems to be terrifying to some in the audience. Are you scared? Yes, I am. You should be. You're on scare tactics, son. It is said in Nostradamus' journal that whoever wears this mask will transform into a demon. Not taking it seriously, the teen Jerry puts on the mask and cuts himself on the cheek just like Rosemary. Double whoa! Back in the real world, Rosemary becomes slightly ill, maybe from those funny cigarettes she's sucking down like Coca-Cola's, and hauls ass to the ladies. As she looks at herself in the mirror, the tiny cut begins to pulsate until it explodes. Meanwhile, Jerry on screen is facing similar effects as he transforms into a demon. 
Worried about her friend, Carmen goes looking for Rosemary in the bathroom where she finds Rosemary in the stall practicing her favorite part in the thriller video. Take a drink whenever someone new transforms into a demon. Carmen escapes, but not before Rosemary claws into Carmen's face. Being chased, Carmen hides behind the screen as her transformation begins. In their clever reveal, she rips through the screen just as a knife appears to rip through fabric in the movie. While transforming in front of the entire audience, Rosemary has a few tricks of her own as she throws the body of a random pervert over the balcony and kills the blind man's daughter and gouges out his eyes. God damn! The audience rushes out while you take a drink when Night Danger by Pretty Maids kicks on. When they try to escape, they find all the doorways to be bricked in. Motherfucking PIMP Tony and George block off the entrance to the auditorium with a Coke machine and suggest to stop the movie from continuing on in the projection room. They bust in only to find the machines have been running themselves, so they destroy the projectors and stop the movie. Meanwhile, in the city of Berlin, punk rockers are straight up jamming till we close our eyes by Go West while enjoying a good old can of Coke. More on them later. In the theater, the group of survivors head up the upstairs balcony to find the blind man and his dead daughter. Tony suggests throwing her corpse off the balcony in case she turns into a demon. However, another demon pops out of nowhere and Tony whips out his switchblade and gives Grandpa Joe a one, two, three. Tony then orders everyone to break the chairs to form a barricade so no one else can get in and hands George the knife to cut down the rope another demon was hanging from. Oh, it's like passing of the torch. Frustrated that no one is breaking down the chairs to his liking, Tony goes to show him just how it's done when a demon appears and rips right into his leg thinking he tastes great. Pour one down for Tony, we hardly knew ye. Back in the city, our very thirsty punks are fighting over the last can of coke while Billy Idol's White Wedding is being played when it tips over and, wait a tick, that's not soda? The crazed driver makes sure every last bit is scooped up when a police car shows up. When the cops know they are up to no good, the punks bail out of the car and hide in an alleyway to the theater. The door mysteriously opens up for them and they enter. As a pair of cops chase after them, a demon who has escaped the theater attacks one of the officers and transforms him into a demon as well and goes off to spread the good news to the rest of the city. They begin searching the theater to find that it was empty while a lone couple, Tommy and Hannah, are in the air ducts with a demon following slowly behind them. However, little does Tommy know that Hannah has been infected and has fully transformed once they reach the end of the duct and kills Tommy. The punks remove the soda machine barricade to find nothing there, but one stays behind to freshen up her makeup. She then gets attacked while the other three go back to rescue her, and we should all take a shot for the coolest damn shot in the movie. As the demons head upstairs to the hiding spot, the group of survivors believe for some damn reason that they are being rescued and break down the barricade, letting all the demons in. What happens next is a full-on massacre with only Cheryl, George, Kathy, and Ken surviving. Kathy becomes a little woozy, so Cheryl attends to her. Maybe now is a good time to apologize for suggesting skipping class. Or not? Ken steps on the crack and breaks Kathy's back, which unleashes a full-on creature from her body and scratches Ken. Not wanting to transform into one of those things, Ken takes the katana from the display lobby and asks George to kill him. He's reluctant at first, not wanting to behead his own friend, but finally caves just as Ken fully transforms into a demon. Cheryl backs away from the scene and back into the theater. More demons appear, some consisting of our punk rock friends. Just as she's being chased, George busts in on a dirt bike while clenching on the sword. Hell yeah! Take a drink and give your buddies all high fives as George blazes through the aisles, scoops up Cheryl, and unleashes hell onto the infected like a total badass. Seriously, where has this dude been the entire movie? Cheryl gets thrown off the bike as George skids off and then proceeds to slice and dice the remaining demons. Just as the two finally get a moment to breathe, a helicopter crashes into the ceiling and into the auditorium. Holy fuck! With more demons coming after them, certified badass George cranks up the helicopter and kills the final demons in the theater. Since there is now an opening through the ceiling, George takes a grappling hook and launches it to the roof. Now they're finally free, right? Wrong. I told you he'll be back. The demonator throws George over the edge of the hole, but he's able to grab a hold onto a rebar. Cheryl then comes up from behind and stabs the D-800 through the back with a grappling hook. George is free, and the two kill the masked mystery man for good. Once on the ground, they find their nightmare has just begun as the entire city is now infected. While escaping through the burning city, a fully armed family and a jeep scoop up the pair and blast their way through the city limits. 
But just because the credits roll doesn't mean this movie's over. In a surprise move, Cheryl transforms into a demon only to be blasted away by a young kid in the front seat. God damn. Take one final drink for our not so final girl. As promised, I'm going to show you how to make demon blood. A drink inspired by the green goo secreted by our demons. That's how you do it. Demons was released in Italy in 1985 and in the rest of the world the following year. It did well enough to have another sequel made just less than a year later. Demons is an ultimate party movie and if you choose to make a drinking game out of it, please do so responsibly. Until next time, you don't have to go home, but you can't slay here. Thanks everyone.